I found this painting online and I thought it'd be really good to, to um, copy this painting to do just to practice grisaille painting and painting just in general. Um, so I always start with the transfer drawing. Um, transfer drawings are meant to um, just get a really solid drawing of your light shape and your shadow shape. And again, like I said, the light shape and the shadow shape are the most important thing to describe form. So you want to make sure that you really have all of that really figured out um, and it'll just make your painting process a lot easier. So the tools that I'm using here is um, I'm using Canson paper, the smooth side of Canson paper. I always start with vine charcoal, that's what I'm using right now because it's really um, really easy to erase. You can see right there I just um, took a brush and I lightened it up. Um, so I also use a really soft fan brush and then when I feel more confident in the outside lines I switch to nitro charcoal which is what I'm using right now and I like to use the HB usually when I'm doing transfer drawings because um, it's a medium hardness it's still pretty easy to erase but you can um, still get really crisp lines with it so I like to use the HB and I have a couple pieces lying around so I just um, will use a piece until the charcoal starts getting dull and then I'll switch to another one so I don't have to keep um, sharpening it again and again so I have like a few backup ones so I can keep going and yeah so I really like to use the fan brush a lot so I'll just um, it sped up a lot so I don't know if you can quite see it but it's the tool if you see a green handle um, but I'll just wipe it over the charcoal to either it does the brush usually doesn't erase the lines completely but it'll lighten it up enough so you can see what you drew and if you wanted to move a line over, just put a darker line down. And um, it is also really good to really keep it closer um, to the impression of the image. So what I do with the brush, which I'm gonna use right in a second, you can see I'm getting the lines down and I'm gonna use the brush to soften all those lines up. Then I take the eraser and I pull out um, the light parts and make sure that's where your contrast is because that's where it is in the image um, in that upper part where the light is on the chest but anyways I will keep using the brush again and again on the lower on the lower half of the figure because that's so dark down there anyway where the um, lower part of the stomach and the legs are you can still see that the, the outline of the legs and like the belly button and the hip bones but I'll keep putting using the brush over it to when I'm correcting the lines and they get darker to lighten them up because I really want the um, all the dark lines to be up where the contrast is um, it's up on the chest there you can see my hand right now is up on the top of the image um, now it's below that's where the chair is below but I was really struggling with this drawing quite a bit and um, so I, I just needed to change my perspective so then I went to the other side of the table and I was working, working from it so everything was flipped upside down which that's a really good trick and I like doing that because it really um, uh, abstracts the image and you just get a new perspective with it so um, yeah so I'll do that sometimes. Also, I have a mirror that I look into, which also flips the image. Anything that you can do that's going to freshen your eye up um, is really good to get a new perspective on it, especially not on a twisting pose, because twisting poses are pretty tricky to do, but uh, they're really dynamic, so I really like them. So they're a pretty, pretty fun challenge. Okay, so now I'm working on the head right now. And the head, if the head is tilted, um, it's always tricky too because we aren't normally seeing heads in this perspective so getting the foreshortening of everything um, a trick that I use that I like to use is the ear point I match everything up to the ear point because that's gonna really explain the tilt of the head so when I'm working on the eyes or the nose I'm seeing how that matches up to the ear and making sure that the tilt all makes sense with it um, yeah, I spent quite a long time on the face. It was pretty tricky because you only see a little portion of it and then it kind of disappears. Um, disappears into the dark background. 
but it's always good to just get as specific as you can uh, and don't give up <laughs> even when you might be tired of working on that face for so long because um, it's just going to be a lot easier than once you have it all figured out now um, when you are going to do this then in painting. Okay, so here we go. So this is the transfer part. So I usually use tracing paper, but I have I left all my tracing paper at my studio. I'm home right now. So um, I used wax paper. It's transparent enough. I've used it before when I was working on a sergeant copy and it worked pretty well. So right now I just have a Sharpie marker and I like to trace the outline of the paper because the size of the paper is the same size as my canvas. So I just want to make sure that the... Uh, the outline I'm gonna cut it so the tracing paper will be the same size as the canvas and I trace all the lines um, I'm not tracing everything you just make sure that you have like the simple shadow shape and dark shape so it's more simplified okay and so now the transfer part so the tools that I have is I have my palette um, I have a that's a bristle brush right there um, in the jar I have turpentine good turpentine um, the paint mixture that I'm taking off of the container right now, which I keep in my freezer to save my paint. Um, that's the same paint mixture that I used for the wash on my canvas, which is black and raw umber. And... So I'm going to take that jar of turpentine. Okay, so I'm flipping the transfer drawing over because you want to be working on the back of it. So I'm going to dip my brush in the turpentine and I really only just dip the very tip of my brush in because um, you only need this kind of the smallest amount possible that you can get on your brush and even try and wipe it off you can see on the sides of the jar. But you really only need a tiny, tiny, tiny amount because um, the littlest bit goes a long way and it makes the paint pretty inky. So I'm going to take that paint mixture, which has just the tiniest bit of turpentine, and then trace again all of those lines. And again, this is the back of the tracing paper. And I work pretty quickly because I want to get all of the lines down kind of at the same time, but then um, you can wait a tiny bit to do your transfer drawing just so it gets the paint gets. Um, just a tiny bit tacky. But so this is my painting setup and that's the canvas that I'm putting it over right now. So you're making sure that the paint then is in between the wax paper and your canvas. And I have just a normal ballpoint pen that I'm using. And so pushing that down on the line is gonna transfer a very thin line then onto your, onto your canvas. And using a pen is also really good because if you look at it from an angle, you can see where you've traced over because it'll have a shinier part to it. Okay, so I just tried to transfer that drawing onto the canvas and it didn't really work. So I did something different this time and I think that's the ingredient why I kind of failed, the process failed. Um, so Matt told me before that when you're doing a wash you should wait a full week for it to dry, which I always thought that was kind of ridiculous because if you're, to make the wash you, you um, use your paint, but it's really diluted with turpentine, which is a dryer, so um, you're thinking that it, like it's gonna dry really fast. So I I did the, the wash on this canvas this morning, I think at like 7 a.m. and it's, I think it's around 4 p.m. right now. I thought that would be enough time for it to dry. It looks it looks dry and it feels um, dry to the touch on the canvas. But so um, using then the paint on my palette that I mixed with more turpentine time to put on the wax paper um, that's going on the toned canvas and then taking the ballpoint pen and pushing that on the lines. Um, I don't know how much you could see on the camera because the sun is setting and it's getting a little darker, but some of the lines you could see, not very well. Other ones, um, it was like the line from the pen, instead of pu pushing paint down on it, it was like 
it um, picked it up and it was a lighter color than the wash instead of it transferring the darker color on. So I wonder if the turpentine on, that's mixed in the fresh paint that's on the wax paper, since it the then it's pulling the wash off the canvas since I didn't wait long enough for it to dry. So I didn't know what to do and since I kind of struggled so much with the drawing, I need to I need to just I want to keep I want to paint really badly today, but I think I just need to wait for it to dry. So and then I'm going to just try and transfer um, the drawing again. So it's a good thing that you have the drawing so you can do as many transfer drawings as you want on it. So um, I'm just going to do it tomorrow and wait for it to dry at least give it a full 24 hours because uh, I've had well Mott just said that she, she'll wait just a day for it to dry like a full 24 hours so I'm hoping that'll work better even though I'm not going to wait a week because I really want to work on it right now um, oh yeah so um, since there were some lines either they were lighter than the wash or they were the actual uh, dark lines from the paint on the back of the wax paper to get them off so none of these I'm going to be putting new ones on hopefully tomorrow morning um, so I wasn't confusing myself. I just took a paper towel and wiped it across it and it picked everything up and it even lightened the wash up even more and it transferred onto the paper towel. So even though it seemed like it was dry to the touch, even wiping it, it took some of it off. So I guess you do have to wait a little bit, which I'm not the most patient person when it comes to painting because I like to paint, but I guess I have to wait till tomorrow. So we learned something new today.